welcome uh, to uh, lecture 20 uh, and in this uh, lecture we are going to uh, discuss um, various uh, techniques which uh, we can uh, use to characterize thin films. Okay. Now for thin film characterization we are uh, looking for uh, that there are many properties of the thin films that we would like to know after we have deposited the thin film. The most important uh, property we would want to know is the, the thickness of the film. Of course, we are depositing uh, thin films, but we want to know what is the thickness okay? and can we control. Then we also want to know the structural properties which are morphology, the grain size, the uh, material, uh, if it is polycrystalline, um, what is the orientation, um, what kind of uh, material is present, phases, all th uh, those kind, uh, kind of things and also chemical properties, okay? what kind of elements are present, what is the stoichiometry of the film. If we have the two different elements in the right uh, pr proportions or not. Okay? So these are some of the general characterizations. But then you also have, you might want to use some uh, specific characterization techniques which will be for the specific application that you want to use for this thin film for. If there are any mechanical applications are required like hardness, okay, you would want to do mechanical testing, stress, strain. Uh, if it is a, a thin film which is used for any electronic devices or electrical devices, then you would want to know the electrical properties. Also, if it is for optical applications, then you would want to know uh, the optical properties of the thin film. If it is for any magnetic applications, then you would want to know the magnetic properties and there will be many more depending on your, um, your application. Okay? In this lecture, we will not discuss these because these are very specific to the type of film and the end use application and uh, it can be tailored. Okay? Uh, we will also not discuss uh, these two structural and chemical uh, characterization because they are various techniques which are similar to what we you use for bulk material like XRD, SEM, TEM and uh, etc. Okay? So there are many techniques. Okay? Within this you can also do chemical analysis of the thin film as well. Like XPS, OJ electron microscopy or spectroscopy, AES. Okay, so we are not going to discuss these techniques because these are similar to what you use for any material characterization. Okay, we are mainly interested in thickness. Okay, because you uh, usually in material science don't measure thickness unless you are depositing a thin film. Okay, or a coating. Okay. So, we will discuss uh, thickness measurements and in mechanical properties, we will discuss stress in films and also adhesion. Okay. We know uh, stress and strain in the bulk of the material, but uh, sometimes uh, as we had discussed in the uh, how the thin films grow, uh, there are sometimes stresses in the thin film because of the mismatch. So, we will discuss the stresses in the thin film and also an important parameter how uh, well it is attached, the thin film is attached or adhere, is it adhering to your substrate. Okay? This is an important uh, property for thin films. Right? Thin film should not start to peel off. So, we will discuss uh, thickness in, uh, of the thin film, stresses in the film and their adhesion to the substrate. Okay? So, these three characterization we will discuss in this lecture. Okay. Now, for thickness measurements, there are various ways to uh, do the, uh, to measure the thickness. There are optical techniques, there are gravimetric techniques and there are mechanical techniques. In optical techniques also, we can have uh, uh, interferometry or the second one is called ellipsometry. Okay. We will discuss these two techniques and the techniques within these two methods of optical techniques. Okay. 
we will discuss gravimetric technique and mechanical techniques how to uh, measure the, the thickness of the thin films and which uh, technique to uh, to use for what kind of material and in what situations okay so first we will discuss uh, optical techniques by interferometry okay now so this is interferometry now we know that when from a surface the light is reflected okay and in the reflected light if between two rays there is a path difference then we will have uh, uh, interference parameter right uh, we will have uh, either uh, uh, so this is based on interference and uh, based on the uh, interference if it is constructive or destructive we will get the fringes okay uh, and this uh, constructive and destructive interference will depend on the path difference in the uh, path of the two rays which will give rise to interference parameter okay so this is a basic framework in which these techniques work okay for this method which is uh, called fringe fringes of equal thickness okay thickness or fet okay now this is the a schematic showing how you you would do this measurement first of all you should have a step on your film okay so you take your thin film you make a scratch so you remove the film from uh, certain part such that you have a step height which is the thickness of the thin film okay this is d thickness of the thin film okay and then you have a reflective coating on top you want the light to be reflected from this so that you can use this light rays to uh, form the interference pattern okay now there is also a reference plate okay uh, and also in this method you use a monochromatic light okay so your lambda a wavelength of the light is fixed lambda is fixed okay now how you do it that you have this uh, you uh, through an objective lens or a beam splitter you shine the light okay so this beam splitter reflects the light onto your substrate okay and then you scan this onto your surface okay so you scan this onto your surface and the lights reflected uh, from these surfaces are collected and observed by a microscope okay through an objective lens so this is the principle of uh, on which this method works okay now this is a reference plate which is slightly tilted so that you can get multiple reflections uh, from any given point so that you can have uh, so this is your uh, reference plate and you have substrate so if you have multiple reflections they will uh, give you uh, more reflected light to form interference pattern so higher intensity okay now uh, suppose this distance uh, is s okay so the path difference path difference uh, path difference for two rays would be um, 2s okay plus 2 delta lambda over 2 pi and this should be equal to multiple integer of wavelength right for constructive interference suppose your film was uniform you, you did not had any film okay so this is the distance okay in absence of film so you will have this part difference and if these conditions are met delta is phase difference phase difference uh, uh, due to two reflections okay so because light is being reflected at two surfaces one is at the top surface of this and the uh, other is the uh, from this substrate surface in this case when there is no film 
ok. So, the light is uh, being reflected. So, there will be uh, you will have uh, two reflections ok and every reflection also changes the phase of the light ok because uh, these lights are nothing but uh, electromagnetic waves and we are discussing the phase difference in the electric field or you can also discuss the phase difference between the magnetic fields ok. So, and this can be taken as pi for high reflectance ok. Highly reflective surfaces will have a phase difference of pi 180 degrees ok. Now, if we take this as uh, pi then this equation becomes 2 s plus lambda is equal to j lambda ok or s is equal to j minus 1 lambda by 2 ok. So, this is how the separation between these two film is uh, uh, for constructive interference. Now, if you have a thin film ok, then this your uh, like this, then this separation will not be S anymore. If you scan your uh, uh, light on top of uh, this in this direction, then this distance was S and then it will become less than S, S minus D right. And when this, this S minus D, then this condition changes ok, you will not get constructive interference or the fringe will shift ok. So, um, now in this uh, uh, you are watching the fringes of uh, high intensity where the constructive interference occurs, but if your S changes because of film thickness then this uh, condition the spacing between these two will also change and this change is by delta ok. So, as you are scanning in this direction from right to left ok, you ob observe the change in the fringe spacing under microscope ok. And from this delta you can calculate uh, the film thickness d as delta over fringe spacing into lambda by 2 ok. So, this will be your film thickness, this is your film thickness ok. So, uh, now you can observe the delta divided by fringe spacing uh, only if your fringe width is small enough right. If the fringe widths are very large then it is very uh, difficult to measure this delta the change in shift right. So, for highly reflective surfaces uh, fringe width width is about 140 of fringe spacing ok. So, very small compared to the fringe spacing ok and about 1 uh, and this uh, fringe spacing would be lambda by 2 because j is my integer ok. Uh, uh, since uh, g is an integer, so your spacing uh, uh, for constructive interference will be uh, lambda by 2 ok. Now, uh, and this delta can be measured about one fifth of fringe width ok. So, from this you can calculate what would be the detection limit, how much smaller thin films you can observe. It uh, turns out you can observe film thickness about 15 angstrom by this method ok. So, this is the detection limit, but you have to make a step onto yours uh, by scratching or by some other method. So, that there is a step between film and substrate also you should coat it with the high reflective material ok and it should be very thin. So, that it does not add to your film thickness ok. So, this is uh, one method. The same interferometry uh, method can be adopted in a different configuration which is called FECO, F E C O, which is called fringes of equal chromatic order, ok. Just a term for this method. What you do in this method is slightly different, you do not use 
monochromatic light okay you use a collimated white light okay which has many wavelengths okay and, and you have formed this uh, and you, you you don't need to scan anymore you just uh, have this uh, scratch again on your thin film in the middle okay and uh, again uh, the rest of the things remain mostly the same here you measured the intensity at different wavelengths okay so these two uh, patterns are without film and you see the uh, which order of the uh, uh, so these fringes are constructive interference for different wavelengths okay because different uh, wavelengths would have different part difference and different uh, uh, condition depending on this this equation different condition for constructive interference okay and you observe all the wavelengths okay and from this uh, because of and you see if there is no film then you will get a st straight line okay but if you have a film you start to see this dip because of this thin film okay and there is a relation between the film thickness which can be derived from the previous uh, discussion okay so we are not going to do uh, going to the exact discussion of that but you can use a white light and you can uh, you don't have to scan you can just uh, you scan using a spectrograph at different wavelengths intensity at different wavelengths of that light okay so this is called fico or fringes of equal chromatic order okay for both fet and feco uh, we need to use highly reflective surfaces and opaque surfaces okay this will not work for transparent surfaces okay which will allow the uh, light to uh, or transparent thin films which will allow light to pass through so these methods are good for opaque uh, thin films okay the next method uh, which is applicable for uh, transparent thin films thin films on substrate is based on reflectance okay reflectance r okay so you uh, so there is no interference pattern in this you just measure the reflected uh, light intensity and as a function of optical thickness optical thickness of film okay an optical uh, thickness is a uh, parameter which is n into d so d is uh, uh, film thickness and n is ref refractive index refractive index of the thin film material and this is thin film thickness okay so multiplication of the two is called optical thickness n into d okay so if you have a material uh, um, with under certain conditions it will give you high reflectance and these conditions are when d so this is my configuration where um, n0 is air n2 i have taken as 1.5 which is my uh, glass substrate and n1 is my thin film uh, of uh, of n1 uh, refractive index and d thickness okay so the d thickness will depend uh, will get the maxima of the reflectance for certain thickness of the film okay which is described by this lambda by 4 n1 um, 3 lambda by 4 n1 5 lambda by 4 n1 so if my d is any of these uh, if it satisfies this condition then i will get uh, the uh, this maximum reflectance okay and this is for if n1 is greater than n2 you will get maxima at these if n2 is greater than n1 then you get minima at these okay and uh, if you uh, just change this to uh, n1 d over lambda then you'll get 1 by 4 3 by 4 5 by 
5 by 4 like this okay so you'll get either maxima or minima at these now if you see in this figure this is 0.25 you get a maxima or minima for different values of n1 okay either larger than n2 or smaller than n1 okay so 0 0.25 0 0.75 and so on and so forth okay so this is you measure the reflectance and how do you measure reflectance you just measure the intensity of the light which is being reflected okay uh, uh, compared to how much you are uh, is incident on your sample okay so this is the basic principle and again you have to use a setup where you observe uh, using a microscope how this uh, uh, and you change the optical thickness and you see at what points this maxima is occurring and then from this expression you can calculate um, if you know n1 what would be the film thickness okay in this method you do not need to have any scratch or any step on your height uh, in your film okay so you do not need to distract your film uh, in this method again this can be done in two way because lambda is involved right so either you can use a method called v a m f o okay which is variable angle uh, monochromatic fringe observation okay now in this method you your lambda is fixed you change the angle of the light which is falling onto this okay while when you change the uh, angle you are changing the optical thickness because the d part how much uh, distance the light travels in your uh, film it's changing right so uh, because if you are changing this angle so the distance it travels inside the film is is going to change okay so from this you can observe different peaks by changing the angle and then you can calculate what is the film thickness okay there is another method in which you do not have to change the angle you use multiple uh, wavelengths okay so you can use a constant angle uh, reflection interference okay so you have white light okay of uh, various uh, wavelengths and then uh, from the reflection pattern you observe the interference and then you see which of these are giving you high intensity uh, and uh, how much uh, of the light is being ref reflected based on that okay and you can calculate uh, uh, film thickness from that using some models okay so this is for transparent thin films where you don't need to have any step height okay so these methods are based on um, interference pattern or interferometry okay next is uh, ellipsometry now el ellipsometric uh, techniques are based on uh, on the principle then when a light uh, a polarized light is reflected from the surface it changes its polarization and the phase okay so uh, uh, polarized uh, uh, or a circular polarized light or non polarized light will have both perpendicular and uh, parallel components of the electric field which are incident onto the surface okay and when it is reflected the, their ratio of um, perpendicular and in plane electric fields will change okay so uh, and their phase will also change differently okay so once you have uh, this film so you will get this reflectance from the film uh, top surface and also you will get this from the uh, bottom surface of the film and the surface properties the material properties of these two will are, are different their uh, refractive index indices are different 
okay so based on the model that how much of different uh, either parallel or perpendicular components of electric fields are uh, reflected uh, we can have two uh, components uh, delta and psi uh, so this uh, sorry is psi is the amplitude amplitude ratio amplitude ratio of reflected light and this is the phase difference okay so uh, you can define the ratio rho as reflected for perpendicular component divided by uh, the reflectance for the in plane component okay and this we can define as the electric field ip so uh, and this rs eis okay where these are e are electric field uh, reflected for perpendicular component electric field for incident perpendicular component and uh, this is for uh, reflected in plane and incident in plane component and this you can define as 10 psi which is amplitude ratio into e to power i delta which is the phase difference okay now you have various parameters involved in this uh, you have psi and delta for substrate and film okay and d which is film thickness okay when you are doing this uh, measurement you need to observe this psi and delta okay you will observe psi and delta and based on various uh, parameters which are n and k n is the refractive index and k is the extinction coefficient of uh, that material uh, which means how much of the light is being absorbed in in that material you will use some models to calculate this film thickness okay so you can calculate both n and k so uh, because there are five parameters involved uh, psi and delta for both uh, film and substrate and also the uh, film thickness there are five uh, components okay which all depend on n k uh, for film and substrate and uh, d of film okay so you need to use uh, a model based approach to uh, create different models and which model fits the observed values of psi and delta okay again you can use two different approaches in this one is uh, multiple angle incidence or mai which is again your lambda remains fi uh, fixed and you change the angle of incidence okay and you observe sigma and delta uh, at those angles you measure sigma and delta and then you correlate uh, by a computer model to nk and uh, film thickness okay or you can use uh, what is called spectroscopic ellipsometry metry or se in which you do not change uh, uh, the angle of incidence but you use multiple wavelengths okay and for different wavelengths uh, you observe uh, psi and delta okay and then you uh, using a computer model relate back to the film thickness in this uh, method you only need to know the uh, uh, substrate uh, values n and k film you can by modeling you can also know the optical constants of the film okay so th this is a method of not only measuring the film thickness but optical constants also of the thin film okay simultaneously and this is based on a by measuring psi and delta and using computer models to fit the data which de uh, describe the film thickness and n and k values okay so this is about optical methods you can also use uh, some gravimetric method okay 
gravimetric there you see the mass how much mass of the material is being deposited and correlate that to film thickness ok. Now this particular method uh, is called uh, quartz oscillator method or uh, quartz micro balance ok QMB uh, quartz micro balance. Now, thin film uh, the mass of the material which is being deposited in few angstrom or few nanometer thin film is very 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 small it is very uh, difficult to weigh that mass right or the change in mass uh, because of thin film ok uh, on any substrate. So, it, so uh, this is a method which is sensitive to very small changes in mass and moreover it can be used in situ during deposition ok. So, this is a big advantage of this method over other thickness measurement methods because you can monitor the thickness while you are depositing the thin film. Not only the uh, thickness, but you can you can uh, monitor thickness or also you can monitor deposition rate. Okay. Of course, if you um, monitor the thickness and with time then you can also calculate the deposition rate ok. Now, this uh, method works on the uh, principle of uh, uh, natural vibrational frequency of quartz ok. So, uh, vibrational frequency of quartz can be given by n over d q ok. So, n is uh, a spring constant, spring constant and uh, d q is the thickness of quartz crystal ok. And this is uh, 1.67 megahertz for 80 cut quartz. Okay. and which is generally used for uh, quartz microbalance ok. And this 80 cut is a particular cut in a particular direction of quartz crystal ok. So, uh, this quartz crystal will have a certain uh, vibrational frequency natural vibrational frequency ok. Now, you can measure this uh, natural vibrational frequency using a piezo crystal ok. Uh, uh, quartz is a piezo material right. So, it has a vibration frequency. So, you can observe these uh, uh, changes in this frequency ok. Now, suppose if delta m mass is deposited onto your thin film, then it will uh, uh, this uh, uh, delta m is rho of density of thin film, area of the quartz crystal and thickness of the film right. So, so this is delta m on uh, quartz crystal ok. Now, how does this change the thickness of the quartz? You can use uh, that this delta mass will change this quartz thickness by certain amount ok. So, th th this you can use that uh, change in quartz thickness is delta m divided by rho of quartz and area of quartz ok. So, you are saying that how much will be the change in quartz thickness if the material being deposited was quartz ok. So, this is quartz equivalent thickness equivalent thickness ok. So, how much change in the quartz crystal thickness? if this material was if delta m mass being deposited was of quartz this is not quartz this is a thin film ok. So, uh, we, we can use this and from this expression we can get what will be the change in uh, frequency with change in uh, quartz crystal and this is n over 
d q square okay and this will be a negative sign because if thickness increases your frequency will decrease okay so but we are just uh, taking the change so the with the positive sign there will be a negative sign also here okay so uh, this will give me delta f change in frequency of the quartz crystal will be n delta m divided by d q square okay and uh, this a q and rho q okay and if uh, if delta f is much much smaller than f the frequency we can also convert this into uh, a this n over d q square we can write as n square over d q square divided by n so we can write this as um, a f square delta m divided by a q rho q n into a okay so this is the area of the crystal now this is some uh, area of the crystal now we can correlate everything as c delta m over area okay and this delta mass over area we can correlate back to c rho of the film thickness of the film okay c is the parameter which is a f square divided by a q uh, rho q and uh, n okay this is uh, uh, weighing sensitivity okay so this is a parameter which uh, can be defined by uh, certain parameters knowing the natural frequency uh, the spring constant the area and the uh, density of the quartz uh, and related to the area of the crystal which is exposed for thin film deposition during your uh, deposition process so in your vacuum chamber during sputtering or evaporation you put this cross crystal with uh, some certain electronics right next to your substrate holder okay very close to it so the everything that is being deposited on your substrate is also being deposited onto your quartz crystal and using this change in frequency by monitoring by this uh, by certain electronics you can measure the thickness of the thin film while it is growing and this method is so sensitive that you can for film thickness you can uh, measure 0.1 nanometer to uh, 100 micron thickness also uh, deposition rate you can measure anywhere in between 0.01 nanometer per second to uh, 100 nanometer per second okay and this is in situ you don't need to do uh, take out the material your thin film and do any measurement on your thin film okay so your uh, film remains intact this is a separate quartz crystal on which you are doing this measurements okay uh, we'll stop uh, with uh, this lecture today uh remaining uh, few parts uh, will cover in the next lecture thank you